won't soon forget the first time you see Jen Colella, and that was in High Fidelity. It was the first time that I was introduced to her particular brand of magic. During our lunch break, we just naturally found one another and sat on the grass and had our first conversation. And I was like, I knew it. You're a good one. And all I knew that I was, I was always happy to see her. We're best friends. He's my bestie. There's no one else on the planet I would rather be with than Christian. Yeah, we usually have cameras running, so this feels pretty natural. This is natural. We, 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 uh, we like to set up cameras in his apartment when we hang out, and then we'll watch us hanging out. I mean, first of all, he's the funniest person I've ever met, and so he makes me laugh unlike anyone else on the planet. <laughs> um, we giggle a lot as uh, you'll see today, probably. We will hang out and talk about our process and what we're working through and some of our struggles or some of our triumphs. And of course, I respect him so deeply. It helps a lot. And then it's just a lot of gossiping, like a lot of mean-spirited gossiping. It feels amazing to have my best pal around, absolutely. Constantly texting, constantly seeing each other. She's so busy now being a Tony nominee that it's harder to get her attention, but we'll get there. Welcome to my home studio. <laughs> it's so nice. I can't believe you haven't had me sooner. <laughs> hey oh. It's a little <laughs> early for that shenanigan. Oh, no. Um first question. Are you warmed up? No, I what do you mean? Like vocally, you have a show this evening. You know that I don't really I'm not I don't spend a great deal of time warming up. What is your warm up? I <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to waste it, uh -huh. I've always said, right? Yeah. So I don't like to, I, I will make sure that my voice is present and then I have to, there's a noise that I I want to hear it. <laughs> that little, you hear the little? I hear it. Yep. Yeah. Adina does it too. Uh, we both. Menzel? Adina Menzel, you're uh, saying that yes. correctly. Good, good. You're doing that right. This is my warm up. Yeah! That's it. Wait, I want to hear got it, it, there. Do it again. Yeah! That's it. If it's, it's there with similar. very little crunch, then I'm good. I like the crunch. You go for the crunch. Or whatever that is. No. Um, how does it feel to be a Tony nominee this year for your work and come from away? It feels amazing. It feels um, like a privilege. It mm. feels like a privilege that I have been hoping for my whole life. I didn't know it was going to come. I really had no idea. So it also feels like a delightful surprise. But you wanted it? I guess so. I wasn't really, yes. I mean, I wanted it in my life, but I wasn't like... I'm going after a Tony. Well, you're not hungry in that way. I'm not. Um, but they've set it up because of the existence of them. We are like brainwashed to want the award. Yeah, well, and the thing that's cool about the award is that I feel recognized mm -hmm. by the people that I've been performing for and with for a long time. That is the part for me that feels really good. How does it feel to be nominated for your, is this four? Yeah. This is your fourth nomination. Yes, it's actually gotten a little old. <laughs> 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 no, the opposite is obviously true. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing to be invited to the party this year. And I do have to say, I feel 100% confident that I am not going to win this year. And there's a relaxation about that that does feel like I'm just so delighted mm. to be part of the whole shebang without any of the pressure mm. of n needing to kind of like, will it, won't it, won't it? It's not going to happen. How interesting. It's liberating, actually. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, and now I can just focus on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, tell me about that, because, I, you know, I'm a big fan of you and a big fan of that show. Good to finally hear those just words new, out loud. Just new. I'm just now, I'm trying it on. I'm not saying it's going to stick. <laughs> 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 um, but I, you know, what I find so incredible about you, and there are many things. We're finally here. Go on. <laughs> is that you celebrate everything you do, every role that you have begun. I watch you go into this process of like, here's how I'm going to study it, here's how I'm going to celebrate it, here's how I'm going to be a leader in the workplace, and it's astounding. So uh, just to talk about the role that you're in now, what have been huh? the first, the, yeah. the challenges of, of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, mm -hmm. and what's been your favorite thing to celebrate? God. Wow, you're good. <laughs> I, at first it was like, how am I not going to do it like these other people who have done it, Gene Wilder and yeah, Johnny right. Depp. And, but that went away very quickly mm -hmm. because Jack O'Brien is a freaking genius and was such a joy. Mm. And it, the material was so obviously not anything that's been done before, so it was just, uh, the fun of it was trying to figure out um, what it was mm. rather than what it wasn't. Um, 
And then I locked in really early on Bugs Bunny for some random reason, and that we, Mark Shaman As an and inspiration I, for yeah. you. Yeah, right and on. musically speaking, the way the whole thing was scored by Mark, it was very, Carl Stalling did a lot of the original Bugs Bunny music, mm -hmm. and it's just classic, iconic, great cartoon music. Mm. And he started underscoring lots of moments in the show, and it just started to feel like a Looney Tunes cartoon. Awesome. Um, and then one day I surprised Jack at rehearsal. I went up to Bust, our props guy, and I was like, hey, can you get me F, who plays Augustus Gloop, was doing this bit. I wanted like a little reception bell. And he started dinging it, and I s took it away from him, and I was punching his hand, which seemed a little extreme. <laughs> and so I went up to Bust, the props guy, and I was like, can you get me like a huge red cartoon squeaking hammer? And just put it on the side, hidden. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> and so one day we were in tech and we got to that moment. I was so, my palms were sweating All with excited. anticipation. And I worked it out with F and then I took it and just slammed his hand and it just squeaked and it got the right reaction <laughs> and it kills every night. I'm it's real so proud amazing. of myself. Yeah. I just love that you have the kind of mind where you're in rehearsal and you're like, you know what I need is a big squeaking hammer <laughs> yeah. to hit my colleague with. Yes. That is what I need. Yeah, so that's, that's how the brain works. Amazing. It's just been an amazing celebration all around. And morale is so high. I imagine mm. morale is incredible in your theater right now after you guys. How many years have you all been together? We've been together over two years at this point, traveling the, the country and then finally arriving here. And it's, yes, morale is amazing. Mm. We, uh, we love coming into that theater before all of the awards hoopla started. You know, it, mm -hmm. the morale has always been great. It's not like now we've got a boost. Um, How do they react to your rampant, unceasing negativity <laughs> as a troop? Do, do they rally? <laughs> they they rally in the around face me of in it? spite of it all. You know, I I felt a little sheepish um, the day after the nominations because it is such an ensemble piece mm -hmm. to have been singled out in that way. Um, and I walked in uh, to the the second floor where the ladies' dressing rooms are, and they all just immediately uh, gave me a huge hug. And I walked into the dressing room, and my dressing roommate Kendra. Uh, had a mylar curtain and balloons and a handmade sign that said, we love you, Jen. And uh, it's just been absolutely nothing but love. Incredible. In spite of mylar, my terrible, by the way. <laughs> terrible attitude. Non-biodegradable. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, you might okay. want to tell Kendra that. Okay. Um, but lovely, a lovely gesture. Misguided, misplaced, and ultimately bad for our longevity as a species. Am I playing to this camera? <laughs> um, <coughs> let's talk a little bit about craft. I know that you <laughs> have a staunch work uh, ethic. Yes. To me, it's the most important thing in the whole world. Everyone's talented. I read an interview with you recently. I read all your interviews. You do? I have a Google News alert for you. Is that true? No, but I'm always <laughs> reading everything. Um, and you said it's, you know, we're all basically talented here in New York City. The people who have kind of come here and like with the gumption and the, you know, dance belt and the mm. tube of chapstick, uh, everyone's pretty talented. Yes. But what sets you apart, in my estimation, is your focus and work ethic. Where did that come from for you? Um, yeah, I believe that as actors, we're in control of two things only, and that's how prepared we are and our attitude. Mm -hmm. And so it just came out of necessity. Mm. I just realized by auditioning and starting to work that what people really want is to see a, that they can trust that you're going to do the work on your own. You can't just show up and hope some director is going to mold you. Um, mm -hmm. To come in with ideas, to come in prepared, to have your lines down, to know what is going on so that my goal is always to be like, I'm good over here. Yep. Uh, please help to me out. To not be the squeaky wheel. I'm not the squeaky wheel. I'm not something you're going to have to worry about over here. I have done my work. Mm -hmm. um, but then on top of that, on top of the preparation, and this is something you believe in as well, <laughs> And I know you this You are about bad. <laughs> Boot check. You don't want to lean down that low. Okay. You're welcome, Thank America. You. you are. You are on boob um, patrol, so oh. no, this is bad. No, you can go that far. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to compliment me? Yes. Um, is being <laughs> like a team player, man. Is being somebody that's going to like yeah. create a family in that room. Like that's what the producers and the creatives also want. Obviously, we have to be talented, but yeah. we have to show that we're going to be kind and respectful and good to work with for years and years and years. Because yes. it takes a long time to get these things up. And the fa the practice of it, because you pra you what I believe you call it practicing kindness. Yes. Would you say that's your religion? One hundred percent. 
It is a practice. Yes. And it's, it requires constant attention. And the thing that always mes mesmerizes me about spending time with you out in the real world, not so much in this room because you've been <laughs> a <laughs> but um, uh, out in the world, I'm always amazed <laughs> <laughs> and inspired by how you treat every single person that you come in contact with. Which is not to say that you don't have your own sense of boundaries. Sure. Because you do and must to survive in this world. But at every single moment, and this is what you do in the theater and what you do with y your work, you are aware of what other people are going through. And you are kind to everybody in as much as you can be. You go out of your way to do it. I guess my question is, why? <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, you do this as well, so you're Inspired very Inspired by you. You're very, very sweet to, to illuminate this for me yeah. in this moment because mm -hmm. I, I watch you I'm just you as Jen Colel says, holding up a gentle mirror. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you're holding up a very gentle mirror. Um, yeah, because that's what we're here on this planet to do, is to take care of one another. Mm -hmm. I believe that 100%. And so if we're not in the practice of doing that, and if I fall out of the practice of doing that, um, then I feel less taken care of out in the world. It, it really is symbiotic. Uh, if you make space for people, you can watch their energy change. If somebody's having a bad day and you share just a smile with them, mm -hmm. it'll change their, it can change their whole attitude. Mm -hmm. And that's the key, man. That if everybody can, can feel as good as they possibly can, why wouldn't you want everyone around you to feel good? Regardless Is of that, Are you not. asking me? Because <laughs> I don't. The, the thing that... <laughs> watching people <laughs> react to you in this... You do the simplest thing, which is what I've tried to tell everybody who will listen about, is when you have an interact, a social interaction in the world that we're used to having, the easiest thing that comes to mind is like a, at Starbucks, a barista. Mm -hmm. And anytime that there's a social situation that we're all just kind of like used to, like, hi, how are you? Thanks, can I get a this, this? You always throw in one extra bit of kindness or friendliness or ask a question or compliment someone in a way that literally, hmm. I watch people, their first reaction is, it's so outside the norm, which is sad, kind of, mm -hmm. but their first reaction is like, are you kidding me? Are we, are you engaging with me in a way that's not, and then they totally melt. Mm -hmm. You can feel their shoulders drop, mm -hmm. their face changes, and they, it's like you're a little oasis out in the world for these people, for everybody. This is maybe like one of my favorite compliments I've ever received. You're the sweetest thing ever. It's true. You're really, really sweet. Is there anything you want to know about my sex life? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I'm so <laughs> glad you brought that up. Um, I know all about your sex life. I know. Moving on. Yep. Um. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, can I talk to you a little bit about your falsettos journey? Because God, I'd love to talk about falsettos. Because I, that was one of my favorite theatrical experiences ever. I've never seen a production of it. Mm. I'd only heard it um, and obviously have been in love with the soundtrack, but was so thrilled mm. that the first one that I saw was this. The production was amazing. I loved it so much. It was incredible. And the love that you all had for one another was, was palpable. Mm. Was, was I like that was absolutely word. incredible. Can you talk to us about that experience? I honestly, I have to thank James Lapine mm. for assembling this group of people mm. across the board, not just the cast, yes. but the, the whole the energy of it was so spectacular. And David Rockwell, who made that set of blocks, basically, yes. for us to play with, we bonded so quickly over that because, technically speaking, we couldn't carry any pages because th there was oh too wow. much physical work to do. Right. So we all, as a group, in an unspoken way, realized that we were going to have to up our game mm. and we came in immediately off book mm. and we were all like we're doing this right and everyone agreed and we all fell madly in love with each other mm. and it was so we trusted each other to go to places that are not comfortable mm -hmm. to fail mm -hmm. you know I didn't feel like I knocked every moment out of the park every day and but you put yourself out there and then try it again the next day mm -hmm. You know, the emotion of that show was so intense. It was hard to shake for a while. And it wasn't until we went to Hawaii <laughs> that uh, I was able to shake it off. Um, but there were nights when the emotion didn't come, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and I did the, uh, the turn up stage shoulder shake, boo-hoo sound. Sure. And then... Uh, Acting. 
That's what it's called. Yeah, we yeah. got to. It's, it's yeah. hard. That balance is hard to bring in your own emotional, uh, you know, integrated things into your character. And then sometimes that's not available. Yeah, like for it, whatever reason. For whatever reason. Also, there's some nice here ornery. You don't want to tap into those Correct. things. Like, I'm sitting in that hospital and I'm like, well, I don't want to think about my dead father right now. Thank right. you very much. Right. Well, I always do, but not in that way. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Hmm. Yeah, so would you say that that was the the hardest show that you've ever done, uh, like emotionally taxing? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. It was just, there were days where I couldn't believe that we were going to have to muster up mm. that. Um, and it's a long show. And yes. But then as soon as we would start, we would have to remind ourselves, like, just start, take the first step, and then you'll get carried yes. away. And it was. And Marvin's a dark guy also. Yeah, kind of a jerk. And you're not that. Well, that's nice. Some well, you're just not. Disagree. Uh, who are these people? What people? <laughs> I almost said a name. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been ridiculous. I I'm know. so glad you didn't. <laughs> 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 no, no, but really, it's so, <coughs> it's such a contrast from, a stark contrast from who you are in the world. Mm, like, nice. was that part of it as well? Not just the emotion, but like, God, I got to put this guy on for a minute. Yeah, that was, that was, but it was a fun challenge to not try to justify some of his behavior. Mm. Like, sometimes people just behave badly. Correct. Clumsily. That's and right. They don't know why, and it's not even necessarily malicious. Yes. It's just he was stumbling through things. Yes. Um, and those people are still worthy of love and redemption. It, mm. I think that's the, the story of Marvin, ultimately. I agree. I thought your work was absolutely stunning. And unlike anything else any of us had ever seen you do, mm, your stillness and your... I've never seen you so still. Honestly, you were just standing there and letting the words happen and letting the emotion happen. And it was beautiful. I learned so much from that performance Thank from you. you. I, anytime I'm on stage and I feel like, why are you doing that with your hands? I'll think of you and be like, why don't you just still yourself and and speak and trust the text and just be present in the moment and not have to do something. Yeah. I think about it's that hard. a lot. It's There's hard. A, the James Lapine's best direction, that, uh, there was a lot of great direction, but he was not into performance. Mm. He was into being. Mm -hmm. And he is not afraid of moments going by where you're not filling it with mm. stuff. Like he's like, you could just sit there. Like, think about that option. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be doing something at every moment. Right. And I think about that now in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like, it's obviously a different thing. But there are moments where I'm like, oh, I could just stand here right now. Mm. And maybe that would be enough. Um, you have this thing on stage where you can't not be true. You don't have a false acting bone in your body. That's the sweetest thing ever. Is that something that can be taught? Or do you think that's something that you either have or you don't have? What a great question. Um, I think it's something that can be taught, but I think experience helps. That has definitely not always been the case for me. Mm. Um, I think, you know, treating uh, the stage as, as a safe space and a place where I can trust myself and trust everyone around me and trust the text takes time mm. and takes experience to be up there and to get to that space where I can just be, um, but that is definitely not always the case, and I'm glad that it, it seems that way to you. Because there's also like fake it till you make it part of it. That's like right. You pretend that you're telling the truth, and then sometimes it actually ends up being the truth. But correct acting yeah, again. Man. You teach a lot of people acting. Mm -hmm. Where like lesson number one? Let's say okay, let's do a little role playing. Okay. <laughs> My name is Angela. <laughs> it's a pleasure I'm shy. to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Mm -hmm. I'm a little intimidated because you're a Tony Award nominee. That's so sweet. I don't know anything about acting, mm -hmm. but I'm hungry, and I'm hungry to learn. Mm -hmm. What's lesson number one? Uh, and again, my name is Angela. Yes, I heard that. It's a pleasure, Angela. Thanks. You're so lovely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, the, first, I want to talk to you about what your audition experience has been like, and how you feel in the room, and what energy you bring into the room, and how you take care of the people that you're auditioning for, and have you considered that? Now, you're saying that when I go into an audition room, I should be taking care of the people behind the table who are judging me? Yes. How do I do that? By being your authentic self, by practicing kindness out in the world. I, I, a lot of the classes that I teach, I say, well, get to the acting part. Like, who are you talking to? What do you want to get from them? Mm -hmm. That's what you need to know, and that's the practice of acting. But the rest of it has to do with the energy that you're bringing in. If I have just held the door for someone, 
uh, downstairs, and then I come in and I'm feeling <coughs> centered and grounded and and my natural self, then they're going to pick up on that. Mm. Instead of walking into an audition room all of a sudden I'm, I'm harried and I haven't been thinking of anyone else and I'm in my own yes, thing and I'm like, reads, hello. And it's Ooh, like, oh. But that was good though. Uh, did you like that? I thought okay. it was <laughs> very charismatic. <laughs> Fi final question from yep. Angela. <laughs> Do you think I have a long road ahead of me because I look like a 43 year old bald man? No. Or I think that's going to serve you. Will I still get cast as 80 Annie? Absolutely. Okay, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Angela's gone. Just that was like good. That. Thank you for that. Yeah, you know what I liked again was you didn't change anything about your physicalization. <laughs> I just believed <laughs> well, because you said it. You were trusting yeah. the text. Thank you. Yeah, that was really good. God. Good lesson, by the way. How much do I owe you? Um, that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be free today, <laughs> yeah, Angela. Yeah, you almost went somewhere else, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, it almost did. <laughs> Damn it. Let's talk about mm -hmm. my sex life. Okay, great. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> just kidding. I'm going to hold up some Rorschach tests, and I just want you to say the first thing that comes to your mind. <laughs> God, that would have been amazing. It would have been oh, really well. good. Do you have any summer plans? You know what? I do have some summer plans. What are you going to do? Well, uh, do they involve me? Yes, I was. I wanted to ask you about this. Actually, I'm glad that we're doing it now okay, um, in such a private way. Yeah, <laughs> um, Kelly Devine and I are going to get a Rock house. Uh, we we're thinking Fire Island, mm -hmm. but like a nice one. We mm -hmm. want to get like a nice house for mm -hmm. a week, um, like nice. second week of August, um, right. and then invite all of our friends. Great. I mean, not all of them. You're one of them. I feel privileged. Yep. I'll be there. <coughs> All right, I cool. love the Fire Island. I'm going to spend some time there with my pal John Mahoda this oh, summer. Right on. When is your? When are you guys going? Sometime in July. Okay, I'm going <coughs> to too. Yeah, great. Great. And I've got this weird, great schedule with Charlie where I have Wednesdays off starting at three thirty until Friday night. So I'll come out. That's on like amazing. A Wednesday evening. Like it's unbelievable. That's an incredible schedule. I it's thought I had the best schedule because we don't have a five show weekend. Oh. We only have one on Sunday, and our show's only a hundred minutes. So <coughs> we're Tell out me at about five. That feeling doing a one-act musical with no intermission. I can't. What time do you finish? So you have a seven o'clock show. You come down at eight forty-five. I have the whole evening. Could have a late <sighs> supper. <laughs> you know how I love a late supper. Jack O'Brien, I know you do. <laughs> it made it very clear to me that dinner yeah. is earlier and supper is later. Supper truly is the later meal. Yes. I love a supper. Love a supper. You Where and I you love a supper. Where do you tend to sup? Well, where's our favorite? Like, if you and I were like, let's go get a meal, where would we go? I have no memory of even eating with you. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, tell me. There it is. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sit back. Okay. Sit back. Sorry, I get excited. Roos Chris Extravaganza? Yes, God, man. Chris. We go to Roos Chris. We order the same, you and I order the same exact thing every time. Which is? Petite filet. But that's right. That's right. And then the... The the cheesy oh, the potatoes. potatoes au gratin. <laughs> yes. And then something green. We like green. We'll either do asparagus. Or yes. Do you like to? You want to split like a chopped salad? Obviously. You want the blue cheese because I don't like it. You can I have like it on the, the side blue cheese and a side, side ramekin. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll maybe probably a martini. Yeah. Because that's so good. God, and they're big there. Let's go do that now. <laughs> All right. When we're done with this. Oh, <laughs> want to rip off. <laughs> um. Can we ta talk about how sweet it is that my mother texts you and your mother texts me? We can. It's uh, a love fest. It's the sweetest. I mean, your mom is a special, special woman. You honestly are the best kid. You, <laughs> the, the attention that you give to your mom is... It's a lot. I know, and it's so good. <laughs> no, you're so kidding. kind. But it's your mom and your sister. That's your close family. Mm -hmm. That's what you got. And the three of you are so loving and, and good to each other. And you do everything you can for those women um, constantly. It's almost daily that you connect with her. Mm -hmm. um, and she wants that and needs that of you. And you always happily and generously give that to her. And I just think it's extraordinary. Thanks. I, I can't talk to my mom every day. And I love her. <laughs> I do. I, and I'm that's something, that an, an understanding that you guys Absolutely. Have. It's, yes. It was just, you know, I have to, I gotta, because I, I want to be fully present with her and give her as much of my time and energy as possible, but she's, she's real, real excited, especially right now, and so. God, she must be just. Oh my gosh. And she's coming. She'll be here for the Tonys. Oh, she is, she is definitely coming. She's my date for the Tonys. Oh my gosh. 100%. She's going to be bursting. She's so excited. She's so proud. And your mom, too. I mean, she has always been extraordinarily proud of you. Yes. Truly. Yeah. Yeah. She gets a little excited. 
She should. Yeah. You're killing it. Feels good. Yeah, man. I think one tries. Well. Am I shiny right now? In the best, sexiest uh, way. Oh. Dude, God. I gotta tell you on camera that you this look you got going right now is fantastic. Thank you, you are the sexiest creature ever. Stop it. You look like a sexy being, like a creature. <laughs> I love it. I'm into God, it. This is amazing. Yeah, it's true. Thank you very much. I mean, you've always looked good to me, but you look better than you ever have. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. You really do it for me, Moral. <laughs> You knew that, though. Yes, yes. We're madly in love with each other and always have been. What there are you going to do? That's good. I don't think people mind. I don't think they... Who would mind? Who at your theater do you least look forward to seeing? <laughs> <laughs> that is a ridiculous question. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, well, no. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's no one at all. Tell me who is your... Who's the closest person to you at your theater right now? Um... Oh, my sweet dresser, Meredith. Mm. Uh, we've been working together for years. Yeah, when did you first start working We with started her? together in Spamalot. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh, I didn't realize it was that far. This is your 10th Broadway show, P.S. Is that right? Mm, no. No? 11th. It's your 11th? Yeah. That is so badass. I can't believe it. I do have moments walking to work in this, the best city in the world. <laughs> and I am, that number pops into my head. And I'm instantly back in like high school and you know, with my yellow sketch pad and my retainer going to play practice for Oklahoma and then yes. like getting to the scene with Ado Annie where ha we'd have to kiss and so I'd like put my sketch pad down, take my retainer out, and, like put it in the little plastic case, like click, and then like hop on stage and be like. <gasps> Wait, can you show <laughs> me the kiss again? Uh-huh. <laughs> And so I got better. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. But that that person still exists and can't believe that I am now doing my eleventh Broadway show. It's extraordinary, and up for your fourth Tony. Unbelievable. So Meredith, you yes, I mean we that we was are your, she was close, your dresser. Close, <laughs> see her and then you've been so fancy that you've been able to request since Spam a lot that you no, it's off off and on. But uh -huh. this, is our, this is our like third in a row together. That's incredible. And she's just. Glorious. I think I've found my dresser. I knew that would happen. I think you really make it when you find your dresser mm. and you're like, this person's coming with me. And you it. met? Allie. In? Um, in D.C. Mm -hmm. she, was <coughs> she was my dresser in D.C. at the Fords, and I was like, she needs to come with us. Her energy, mm. her um, ability to do the thing and to also read our energy and the whole thing. She's an extraordinary person. I'm taking her with me. Amazing. Yeah, man. Feels How's great. she <laughs> handling New York City? She's loving it. Okay. She's thriving. She's extraordinary. She is uh, someone who's happy at all times. She really knows how to like be positive and present and, and grateful and is happy at all times. Amazing. Yeah. Tell her I said hi. I certainly will. Tell Meredith I said hello. I will. Right on. Do you want to talk politics? No. All right. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Not because we disagree. We're totally on the same page. I was trying to think of some kind of way to talk about it mm -hmm. in the context of what we do. We can do that. I, I just, uh, it's so, I don't know if it's worth going down that road. I understand. It's polarizing, I guess. I understand. Let's talk about something else. Okay, let's move on. Mm. Do you feel, I'll ask you this, in the face of the political climate right now, do you feel especially fortunate to be an artist? I feel especially fortunate in all of this insanity to live in New York City. Yes. Um, and to be surrounded by people who are not like me. I mean, I, I, on some levels I understand the mindset, if you do not live in a city where you are mm. around people that are not like you yes. and have to find daily peace with that, yes. then I get that it's trickier. You're just not as exposed to everybody else and all of our differences. That's right. And so, but I, I guess my one wish is that you could kind of like step outside of that experience and be like, oh, obviously we're all equal and obviously you're entitled to your own happiness and to live your life. And yes, and um, that every person deserves respect regardless of where they're from. Correct, or mm -hmm. who they want to have sex with yeah. or who they fall in love with. That's all. Um, so I, I just feel lucky that we live in New York City. Yep, me too. And yes, of course, being an artist and being in a collaborative art form, and it's... Hmm. Yeah, it's good for lucky. empathy. It is good for empathy. And I, I'm reading this great book right now called The Bad Feminist. Um, and we get it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it, there's a whole section of, of chapter on privilege and recognizing our privilege. Mm -hmm. And that has such a negative connotation sometimes, the word privilege. But I think it's important uh, for those of us that are deeply privileged and that we have a full belly and a roof over our heads and we live in the best city in the world and mm -hmm. uh, to, to recognize that and, and to stand in the truth of that uh, so that your gratitude is more at the forefront. You know, if I recognize every day how privileged I am, then my gratitude obviously is going to be heightened and mm -hmm. then I'm going to naturally treat people better. Um, and I don't think you have to live in New York City to have a sense of your privilege. There are so many of us living in America who are so deeply, deeply privileged and don't have to worry about where our next meal is coming from mm -hmm. or if there's a bomb coming through the window. And I think if we can start there, it, it'll help us all kind of um, connect a little bit more. We have to go soon. Yeah. I'll see you out in the world, I'm sure. Aren't we going to get some food? Steak? Yeah, some yeah. steak. Um, so I just want to ask you, do you know what you're wearing on June 11th to the Tonties? Um, I like when we say Tonties. <laughs> we also say good morning. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, um, I, I'm being dressed by Anna Wintour of, of Vogue. I know, styled by her. Isn't that crazy? Have I not told you that yet? No. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Some catch up this has been. Okay. I understand. That's your amazing. Feelings. Yeah. Um, Just that, that sentence, can you believe it? I can't believe it. I know. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Can't wait what about to you? See what you? What are you wearing? On. Probably a suit of some kind. Yeah, see? Yeah, maybe you a suit look of real armor. good in a suit. Ooh, nice. suit of armor would Storm be trooper. cool. Stormtrooper. Maybe. I'm, I'm going to go You're full stormtrooper. Up top. Thank you. It's the right decision. I wouldn't have gotten here without you. Well, I wouldn't have gotten here without you. All right, I'll see you there. I I'm love so excited. You so I much. love you too. This has been amazing and not at all artificial. Tum, tum, tum. Come here. Can we give me? Can I get? Right, I can get you. on you. Okay. Give me the thing. Yes. <laughs> Easier. <laughs> I love you. All right. I'll see you next time on the catch up. <laughs> <laughs>